So it turns out it's not what genes we have, it's actually which ones get turned on and turned off. Right. Called epigenetics, the things that influence gene expression without changing the genetic code. And I referenced the Dutch hunger winter of 1944, 1945, and it taught us a lot about epigenetics because the Dutch hunger winter uh, flipped bad genes on and good genes off. And people that uh, live through that have more health issues than people that didn't go through that. But we now know that that epigenetic is passed down from generation to generation. And so the Dutch hunger winter, we can see multiple generations who are less healthy than people that did not go through the Dutch hunger winter. We see the same thing with a Holocaust, a descendants of Holocaust survivors because they got flipped the wrong way. Now, right. we know that we can flip them the right way. So like what you eat flips them the right way. Getting out in nature, resetting that cortisol, doing your deep breathing, it flips genes the right way. Harvard did a beautiful study on epigenetics and meditation about 16 years ago. Right. Now, interestingly enough, that Dutch hunger winter also told us something really important about wheat, proteins, and gluten, because there was no wheat for that entire year for a big population. And we can see the epigenetics because of starvation being adversely affected. But interestingly enough, there was a lot less celiac disease and autoimmune disease in the people that lived through the Dutch hunger winter because they went a whole year without eating wheat proteins. Right. And when they started going, well, this population doesn't really get celiac disease, which is where wheat becomes like battery acid bad. And it's an autoimmune disease that attacks the small intestine. They go, wow, these people didn't eat wheat for an entire year. They, they're not getting celiac and other autoimmune disease. Wow, there must be something about the proteins in wheat, including gluten. There's 62 different kinds mm -hmm. of gluten. One that right. is not great for humans. And it turns out it creates a lot of inflammation in the gut. And if you're not good at getting rid of inflammation, wheat, proteins, gluten included will build up infl inflammation in your gut. And then you get all these autoimmune things, the gusto central mechanism. So it actually taught us a lot about how we can avoid autoimmune and chronic disease, even though it's a lot about how genes get flipped through adverse events, starvation included, that drive multi-generational disease. This is where you kind of hear things like, we live the trauma of past generations. But we right. know what we got to do to flip the genes the right way. And by doing that the right way, we really think that humans, you know, I always kind of talk to people about how, well, nothing is age related till at least you're 90. If it's before 90, it's not age. It's something we should be able to address it and fix it because it's not age. But really, it looks like human body is designed to live 107, 118 years if epigenetically we're in a really good place in quality of life, like you mentioned, not life, but quality of life.